with the pick. Dalton not pleased, and he'd especially dislike it because on the very next play, this would happen. Miles Boykin made just one catch on the night, but he'd make it count. Stays on his feet and gets in for the score, 14-10 in favor of the Ravens. Third quarter now, Ravens still up 17-10. They ran the ball for 294 yards last night, and then Lamar had this dime to Hollywood Brown in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown that put it out of reach. 34-17 in favor of the Ravens. That's how it goes last night as the weekend in the NFL comes to a finish. So the Ravens are a team that... They could get dangerous, right? It feels like they are a team that could become dangerous as time goes forward. There are a lot of teams in the AFC that don't lead divisions right now that you can see becoming dangerous going forward. The Browns, Ravens, Dolphins, Colts, maybe the Raiders. Let's go around the horn here as we take a look at the AFC playoff picture at this point and see which of you guys, if I were to tell you that one of these non-division leaders is ready to make a deep postseason run this year, Ryan Clark, which one would it be? You know what? This is hard for me to say, being a Pittsburgh Steelers fan and just not necessarily believing in this team all year, but it's the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns are now playing very similar to what we saw the Tennessee Titans last year. They believe in their run game. We've seen at least last week that Baker Mayfield have given the opportunities if the wide open wide receivers are dialed up that he can have the accuracy and the streaky playmaking that allows this team to be explosive in the play in the play action pass game. And we also saw that defensively, especially with Miles Garrett up front, that they could come up with big stops and turnovers to help this offense win. And when you're nine and three, when you've beaten the Colts, when you've beaten the Tennessee Titans, and now have an opportunity to go up against the Baltimore Ravens, the Cleveland Browns have a chance to set themselves up very well heading into the playoffs. I like that pick. Dominique, how about you? Yeah, I'm going to have to stick in the same division and stick with the Ravens. And I think the, the Browns are a good choice, but it feels oh, like... Oh, my God. <laughs> it feels like to me that we are giving my man Baker more credit than he deserves. Off this last week, a blowout, he had a bunch of numbers. But, I mean, it's not like he was doing difficult things in that moment. I think in tough situations, the fact that the Ravens have a defense a defense that you can rely on, and an offense that can reach the highest heights and also is pretty bad sometimes. I think that is much scarier to most teams. Would you rather face Lamar Jackson in that Ravens defense, or would you rather face, I guess, Miles Garrett in Baker Mayfield? I think like I feel like it's um, you'd rather face the Browns than the Ravens, in my opinion. Ryan, obviously the skepticism is there. Desmond Howard, who you got? <laughs> I'm going to be the tiebreaker, and I'm, gonna go, I'm going with the Cleveland Browns. I, I, I like the way Baker Mayfield's playing right now. And, and when Ohio. Baker was in college, oh. when May <laughs> born and raised in Cleveland, baby. <laughs> but when, when Mayfield was in college, what made him special was he was a streaky guy. And I tell you what, once he gets hot, there's no stopping Baker Mayfield. And both teams, the Ravens and the Browns, both have tremendous rushing attacks. But, guys, if you really had to put the ball in one quarterback's hands in the fourth quarter late in the game and he had to surgically execute a, a drive about 80 yards by throwing the ball, I would rather go go with Baker Mayfield than Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar, if he's able to run and do all that stuff, he's great. But if you're telling me that he has to execute um, some passes with some accuracy, 80 yards, you know, with less than a minute left in the game, I'm going with Baker Mayfield, so I'm going with the Cleveland Browns. And because Miles Garrett, he can wreck any offense's day. Like I said, my, my pick is Cleveland. Put it up there because I'm going to cede my time to Dominique. I like that look on his face. Go ahead. Oh, I don't need much time. <laughs> Monday night, ESPN, 8.05. We don't got to talk about it. We don't got to argue. We'll see what happens then. Y'all saw what happened the last time, Nicolay. We'll see what happens then. No more words from me. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. The gauntlet has been thrown down. It will be the Ravens and the Browns on Monday Night Football next week. And that's an outstanding promo. Speaking of that, Ryan Clark, it is now your time here because, you know, there's nothing that we enjoy more than putting the ESPN NFL power rankings up on the screen and you see what they are this week. Chiefs, Steelers, Saints, Packers, and Bills. Those are the ESPN.com NFL power rankings. But the rankings that we focus on every week are the ones that Ryan Clark Give us, and I cannot wait to see where you've put everybody this week. RC, the floor is yours. And I tell y'all every time, I don't know why we have to go to the rest of the crew so they can critique my power rankings when they are my power rankings. 
and ESPN almost had it right. They just don't have it in the right order. And at number five, I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. The last two weeks, Bills fans have been on me like they're the Rodney Dangerfield of my power rankings. And they think that I don't give them any respect. And so now I feel like I got to show you how to do it the right way, Buffalo Bills. The way that you played against the San Francisco 49ers, that's the way to do it. This makes me put you in my power rankings. This makes me not give you the disrespect of a black thought, of a Beanie Siegel, of a master ace. When you have Cole Beasley, when you have Stephon Diggs continuing to get open, continuing to make plays, Tredavious White now coming along three interceptions in the last four games. Edmonds at the linebacker. This is the team that you don't want to play in the playoffs. And as they head down the stretch of the AFC East, they have an opportunity to make a ton of noise in the playoffs with the way that they play football and a quarterback that's efficient in the red zone and tough to stop inside and outside the pocket. And number four, I'm going with the Green Bay Packers. Why? Aaron Jones. Aaron Rodgers. The only thing that can make this offense better is if they had Aaron Neville singing before every game. Yeah, shout out to the N.O. Aaron Aaron Rodgers is playing absolutely out of his mind. He's playing at an MVP level, a level we haven't seen since 2016, 2014 when we thought he was the best we'd ever seen play this game. And look at what the things that Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones can do. 77-yard touchdown last week to seal the game. Catching the ball out of the backfield. Obviously, we know who Devontae Adams is and what he can do. And at number three, I'm going with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And yeah, they're going to be a little bit mad this week because I had them at number two in the previous weeks and they were undefeated. And they were like, oh, Ryan, you lose your you lose your Steeler flag. You don't get to raise a terrible towel. Shut the hell up. I knew this junk was coming. I saw it coming. This team, they didn't need a loss like Bart said, but they were on their way to lose and it wasn't executing offensively. They couldn't move the ball in the run game. But Ben Roethlisberger has been amazing this year. He's emerged if it wasn't for Alex Smith, he'd be the comeback player of the year. And so when you watch this team and you see this defense losing some pieces, you know they have it. But now Coach Tomlin has to tighten it up a little bit. And let's go at number two. It's the Kansas City Chiefs. And I know ORC all year. Patrick Mahomes. You think Patrick Mahomes is the GOAT? He can do anything. He can. Patrick Mahomes is like a great Bible verse. I can do all things through Patrick Mahomes that strengthens me. And that's how the Kansas City Chiefs roll. If it gets tight, if it's in the end of the game, if it's a two-point type type situation, if it's a four-minute type situation, we're putting the ball in Patty's hands and we are going to win. And on the other side, like I tell y'all, every week the landlord is ruling. Two interceptions for Tyron Matthew last week to seal the game against the Denver Broncos. And at number one, I'm coming back home. I could go to Drago's now. I could go to the Harris Casino. I could go to Bourbon Street. I could go to the French Quarter because the Saints are my number one team. And here is why. These Saints have the most dominant unit in football, period. The Saints are the best defense playing in this league. Their defense is better than anybody else's offense. Their defense is better than anybody else's special teams. I told y'all on Monday, they make every single team they play worse on offense than the Jets. Yes, that's what type of team this is. That's the type of team that wins on each and every possession. It's the New Orleans Saints when they get Drew Brees back. Now you have Latavius Murray, Emmanuel Sanders, Michael Thomas, Jared Cook, and a defense you can't score on. You tell me a team in the NFC that's going to beat the Saints in the playoffs, and I'll show you a liar. I like that one a lot, and I was looking forward to seeing you put that up there. And I will say this very quickly. Again, those are Ryan's picks, his power rankings. He's got the Bills at five, the Packers at four, the Steelers three, Chiefs two, and New Orleans at one. I had Sean Payton, uh, Dominique, on the radio show yesterday, and we talked about it. You realize the last two seasons, they've played eight games without Drew Brees, and they are 8-0. That says a lot about just how complete a football team they are. Do you agree, Dominique, they're the best team in the NFL? Yes, I think you're right. They're the best team in the NFL when Drew Brees gets healthy. (laughs) Because I think right now they've been fortunate with Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill has played decently well. But let's be honest, they played against a quarterback or running, excuse me, a receiver playing quarterback. And then they played against uh, the Falcons. And then they got another uh, lucky break (laughs) where they got to play or they're going to play against the Eagles. So I don't think necessarily that the Saints are... uh, a dominant team offensively, hey, but that defense is something hey, special. Yeah. Go ahead, RC. Hey, Dom, let me tell you how Himbo makes me look smart. Himbo, <laughs> this is why Himbo makes me look smart. One, I have on my purple coat, so I'm actually, I am, just, just look intelligent. But on the <laughs> other side of that, they've had 57 defensive possessions in the last five games, Dom. They've yeah. given up 44 points. 
That's a level of dominance that you don't often that, see, especially in this day and age right. of I agree. offensive football. So the and thing I think when you could do those things, the thing that scares me about that, about them being dominant defensively, is this league is not built for defenses to succeed. Like, there's going to be a game when they get scored on. And I don't know that they have the offensive firepower currently to compete in that situation. That's why you kept putting Patrick Mahomes at the top. That's why you kept putting KC at the top. It's not because of the landlord, the honey badger, whatever you want to call them, or that defense. It's because of Patrick Mahomes. You and me, we both know that's the truth. And we know that there's going to come a situation. They're going to need somebody to make some plays on the offensive side of the ball. And if Drew Brees' ribs don't heal up, I'm not sure Taysom can do that. Quickly, let me get Graziano in here. The other thing that occurred to me yesterday when Man. I was interviewing Sean Payton, all this talk about coaches of the year, Mike Tomlin, Kevin Stefanski, Brian Flores, yeah. Sean Payton's name should be in that discussion, shouldn't it? Absolutely should. Look, I mean, the, the Taysom Hill decision was not widely agreed with. Uh, and he's 3-0 and with him at quarterback. There's no question about it. But, man, Dominique is right. Uh, RC's overthinking this. The Chiefs are the best team. They're just bored. They're just marking time until <laughs> January when somebody can actually challenge no. them. And you know. I, the, the and same